that's that's all right, bro. That's all right. That's all right. Just, huh? Uh, just again, another mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now is the time. Uh, and uh, Ms. Tallulah. Uh, Tallulah. Got you on television, girl. I'm gonna see you on television. Everybody gonna say, who is that little girl on television? You just listen to your granddad, okay? And just watch and just see what your granddad is doing. I'm hoping in 45 minutes I can be like her. And be huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there everything ready? Uh, he's just gonna set some shots at okay. mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> I know, I'm scared. <laughs> you kicked me over here two years ago. NAACP and, and empowering the African American community. Is that right, Doc? Uh, uh, Pastor Walker, uh, Dr. Tallulah Chenault. 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 Okay. Chenault. Okay. And Pastor Walker, you explain to us why. Yeah, okay, that, that'll give you an opportunity when we talk about background education experience going and, you know, let people know that you're still doing what you're supposed to do. You see, and sometimes you have to do those kind of things, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The television. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. There, so he's got to go from the back, front to the back to adjust the levels. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Walker, 31, 32, 33, 34. Pastor Kelvin L. Walker, this is my little pretty granddaughter, Bailey. Hey, baby girl. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right. Now it's the time for all good men to come to the aid Native of their country. country. Amen. It's all right. This is 955, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. 955. Okay. And if we get out of this.
Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the African American Community and empowering the African American Community. And of course we have with us to talk about the NAACP and uh, the uh, African American Community, uh, Dr. Tallulah Chenault. And uh, Dr. Chenault will give us some information in reference to her background, education, and experience. And with Dr. Chenault is uh, Pastor Kay Walker. And all of us, I think, are familiar with Pastor Kay Walker, but I don't think that we know uh, too much about uh, Pastor Walker's granddaughter. And he's going to explain her to us this morning when he talk, we talk about background, education, and experience. Ms. Chenault, let's start with you by having you to give us some statements in reference to your background, education, and experiences. And take about three minutes, and then we'll have Pastor Walker to uh, give us some similar kind of information. And he will also tell us why he is in uh, control this morning <laughs> of uh, his granddaughter, uh, Bailey. Let's start with you, Dr. Chenault. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say good afternoon and I'm very happy to be here today. Well, I'm a native of Nashville. I was born and nurtured right here in the Music City. I attended Cameron High School, where I graduated, and from there I attended Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, with a major in psychology and dramatic arts, after which I attended Fisk Meharry Joint Clinical Psychology Program did not complete the, the program, but earned 36 hours toward my uh, clinical psychology degree. I went on to attend Illinois State University, where I earned my master's degree in education with a specialty in special education. After teaching for a number of years, I decided to go back and get another degree which is in a, a doctorate degree in education administration and leadership. And so in a, in a real sense, you've had an opportunity to live around the Nashville community for a long time and uh, uh, do a lot of things educationally within uh, Nashville. Is that what we're saying? Yes, indeed. Nashville is my home mm -hmm. and Nashville will always be my home. I have six siblings here in Nashville, uh, my mother and father also as well uh, were born and raised in Tennessee uh, and in Davidson County. So very much so, and in the last five years since I have uh, returned to Nashville, I have been actively involved in the NAACP. Prior to that, I was the executive director of the Urban League in Illinois. But in the last five years, as I said, I have been an active member in the NAACP. I've been chair of the Education Committee. I have also uh, been assistant branch secretary. Currently, I am the branch secretary of the NAACP. Very good. Pastor Walker, let's uh, have you to give us some information. I think that uh, our audience certainly is familiar with you, but they may not, they may not know uh, this young lady that you have with you and explain not only your background in education, but tell, say something about uh, Bailey. Okay, Dr. Hanwell, again, thanks for allowing me to be on your show this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Kelvin L. Walker, born and raised right here in Nashville, Tennessee. I attended the public schools here in Nashville. Uh, pretty much everybody been around know my story, you know, that uh, never uh, didn't complete high school. I actually got kicked out of all the public school systems in the state, in, in Nashville, Davidson County. But I uh, went in the Navy at a young age, age 17. I went into the military, went into the Navy. And uh, when I got out of the Navy, uh, after serving a short period of time there, I uh, didn't serve out the full term of my enlistment there. I was a, kind of one of those characters back during those times. And uh, got out of the Navy, went through OIC Opportunities Industrialization Center and got a GED through there. From there, I went to Tennessee State uh, for a while. Uh, all the time, I was uh, addicted to drugs all during that period of time in the Navy. and all through, uh, through my time at Tennessee State University, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that didn't pan out either because of my drug addiction. But uh, I come here today and I got my little granddaughter. This is my granddaughter, Bailey. Bailey's uh, story is unique in and of itself. On uh, March the 24th, 2015, uh, her mother was murdered. My daughter was murdered uh, here in a domestic situation. And We've been taking care of her. My wife and I have been taking care of her, raising her and her brother. She's three years old, her brother's four. And this is my little princess right here. And she's gonna grow up to be a, a powerful young lady. And that's what we're here today to talk, talk about, you know, empowering the 
national branch of the NAACP so that we can ensure that there's a voice out there for the future of, of our children. You know, she's important to me and uh, her and all of my other grandchildren, she's very important. So we got to do that, empower the NAACP so that we can have a voice for the people mm -hmm. out here, especially for our youth. Very good. And of course, what we'll do, Pastor, is to uh, take our first commercial break and then we'll get back and talk about, with you and Dr. Chenault, talk about some of the aspects of the NAACP. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. segment right. and this is eight minute okay. segment and so whatever you want to talk about this is a, you know okay. I'll introduce the show again okay. and then uh, we'll and, and this eight minutes you'll have about four minutes and we'll okay. try to put pastor give him four minutes okay. and just start off and take about three minutes and then we'll give him three minutes and okay. come back and let him okay. close, close, close the side. clock huh? <laughs> okay no well you okay just, just okay yeah just that's you know, fine just, yeah Okay. Oh, yeah. Say, uh -huh. say it all. Say it all. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to uh, Dr. Uh, Tallulah Chenault and uh, Pastor Kay Walker and his granddaughter, Bailey. And uh, we're talking about uh, empowering the NAACP. And uh, Dr. Uh, Chenault, let's see if we can pick up uh, during this second segment to give you an opportunity to say something about the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People that you would like for our audience to know this morning. Well, after giving such a, a long or a trail of, of information regarding my education, mm -hmm. I would like to um, state and really explain why I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, not only to talk about the empowerment of the uh, community, uh, but also to talk with the community about some things that I would like to see happen at the NAACP. Mm -hmm. I'm currently running for president mm -hmm. of the Nashville branch NAACP. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I would like to see a new image, a new focus uh, in our branch. Mm -hmm. In terms of empowerment, uh, one of my important platforms is voter registration. Mm -hmm. I think today with everything that's happening in the election process mm -hmm. that African Americans, in order to be empowered, need to vote. We have always needed to vote, but it is incumbent upon us today to get the vote out. As president of the Nashville branch in AACP, I plan to, um, to have uh, a voter registration program every year and all during the year because I think that's really important. Uh, as well, um, I have. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and so, in a real sense, uh, voter registration is one of the most important things that you see. Now, why would you think, in terms of uh, uh, enlisting and getting African Americans to vote, why is that important to you now? Well, I think it's very important because everything is political. Mm -hmm. Everything is political, from um, education to economic development is important, to the quality of health care, to affordable housing. If we are not voting, if we are not at the table, then, as I said, we're on the table. And I believe that voting gives the community power. It empowers us, and it's important that we take a stand, not only uh, verbally, that we also take a stand through the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor, looking at uh, some of the things that you believe, and I know you've been involved with the NAACP for a long time, mm -hmm. and that some of the things that you believe that we ought to do at this particular point in our history, dealing with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or any other organization that might be helpful to what we're trying to achieve. Well, Dr. Haney, I think that when it comes to uh, the NAACP Nashville branch, branch number 5606 here, uh, the most important thing I think that we need to do for the NAACP is to give the NAACP the power that the NAACP is supposed to have in terms of giving the NAACP a voice. You know, just like our vote is our voice, you know, the NAACP for some reason, 
has lost its voice here in, the, in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I don't know if it's lost it or if it has been intentionally silenced, mm -hmm. you know, uh, by maybe the powers that be. Because as we know that the NAACP as a whole nationally is the oldest civil rights organization in existence in, in the United States of America. And it's one of the most powerful or the powerful, most powerful one in here. But for some reason here in this Nashville branch, it doesn't have the power. It's like the teeth has been pulled. And I, when I first initially got involved with the NAACP a few years ago, I got involved because of what I didn't see the NAACP doing. And rather than sitting back and complaining about it, like I hear so many others, I decided to get actively involved in the NAACP to try to, you know, make some things happen. You know, of course I got in there and I saw, you know, a lot of things that I, I didn't like and a lot of shenanigans and stuff that was going on and stuff. And I really put a kind of bad taste in my mouth. And I, I kind of backed off for, it, uh, for a minute because of some of the things I've seen that took place in the last election a couple of years ago with our current administration, uh, Louis Wallace being the president, current president now. And uh, I kind of backed off, you know, but I still believe that the NAAC can be power empowered mm -hmm. if you got the right people in there that's not afraid to step up and stand out mm -hmm. and challenge these different issues. It's mm -hmm. so much happening in our community and our society, you know. People are, are, are being pushed out of their neighborhood and their community, pushed way out to the outskirts of town, somewhere like the old folks you say, somewhere out in Plum Nelly, somewhere, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's nobody saying anything, you know, and, and it's like the community, our, our community, the black community is like, man, we don't have a voice. Who, who's going to speak for, who's going to represent us? So my thing is, let's empower the NAACP. And I think that Dr. Uh, Chenault here is, would make the perfect uh, president of the NAACP's Nashville branch because of, of the tenacity that I've seen in her, you know, since she's come on board and become a part of the Nashville branch of NAACP. I knew her from years ago. I uh, actually went to school with her brother, her uh, younger brother and stuff, and we were really good friends throughout the years and stuff like that. And uh, I didn't know at the time that she was as tenacious as she is, but mm -hmm. from being in, in some of the meetings at the executive committee meetings and stuff and, and, and seeing her, you know, push the issues and the things like that, you know, I, I said, well, you know, when I found out she was running for president, I said, yeah, I'm on board. You know, mm -hmm. I really wanted to see that happen. And of course, uh, I'm seeking a position as third vice president of mm -hmm. the NAACP because, I, you know, like I say, somebody got to say something. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do something. And apparently what we have there, we got some good people there. But it's everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. And if leadership is weak, if leadership is ineffective, if leadership is disregarding the fact that it is leadership, mm -hmm. then leadership needs to be changed. And I think it's time for a change in leadership of the NAACP so that the NAACP can be empowered and be the NAACP mm -hmm. that that it's supposed to be and stop playing these games. Very good. And Dr. Chenault, we've got about a minute and a half before the end of this segment. And so you think that uh, you have uh, what is necessary in order to bring this organization together. Say something about that. About something. Yes, sir. I believe that I have what is necessary to be a leader, a strong leader in the, in the Nashville branch in AACP. I have worked tirelessly for the last five years. I have assumed a number of positions in the NAACP. I have exerted uh, energy in trying to get issues out front so that the community as well as the establishment can understand that regardless of what the matter is, it's not about race, it's about right. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of issues that have confronted the community in the Nashville area that have not been, as a uh, pastor had said, has not really been vented mm -hmm. and discussed in our community. So very much so, I believe that I am a strong leader and I can lead the NAACP into a successful year. Very good. What we'll do now, Dr. Chenault, is to take this second uh, final commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. When I it comes am. out, you, you, you nobody will ever be able to tell that you're rattled. 
Don't, don't look right on the knee. I can't, I can't help it. Yeah. Can't no, well, this, this, this might be your first experience. It is. So, and it's, it and is. you have to admit that this is an unusual mm -hmm. kind of experience it and is. whatnot, but we, we, we're making it through, and so we've got 10 minutes. So uh, what, what, are, what are we going to do? So Mr. what do you want to talk about uh, um, during the last 10 minutes? See, when, when we come back, we'll have 10 minutes. Right. And so what you want to talk about what voting? That's, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the suffrage. Or you want to. Uh, and, and, and what you're planning on doing in reference to the suffrage and except whatever you wish to yeah. talk about. And, and, yeah. and you started off and Pastor will help, you know, give you some information in reference to what he has yeah, to just, say. And then, yeah, you know, yeah, we'll, what you want to do is, you know, as a yeah, and, and, and it'll all come together. Okay. And how you can take this you know, mm -hmm. yeah, organization okay. to the next level. Okay. okay. Yeah, just. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Uh, Tallulah Chenault uh, from uh, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and Pastor Kay Walker, who's also a member of the uh, National Association and his granddaughter who's with us. And this, I think, is her first television experience and uh, she'll learn. And I think that uh, what we're trying to do today is to not only empower the community, Dr. Chenault, but to talk about some of the ways that is the suffrage, how that might be, uh, we might be able to do that. So let's use the last few minutes to talk about voting and the suffrage. Okay. Uh, voting, as we know, is extremely important in our community. Our visibility, our empowerment, all depends on whether or not we register, get our documents in order, and vote. Voting in Nashville, Tennessee, regardless of whether it is the school board, whether it's Congress, our senators, and our representatives, is extremely important. A number of policies have been passed in our council meetings, in our Senate, that are not beneficial per se to the African-American or black community or the community of those who are impoverished. And the only way in which African-Americans and other minority groups are going to truly, truly receive social justice mm -hmm. is that we vote, mm -hmm. that we make a, uh, an appearance at our council meetings, mm -hmm. that we vote, especially in this presidential election. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as a branch secretary of the NAACP, we are bipartisan, okay? Mm -hmm. We cannot actually go on camera or say who our community should vote for. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking our community to do is look at the issues, think about the issues, mm -hmm. not what people are saying now, but what they've said a month ago, what they've done a year ago, two years ago, and vote for your best interest. Mm -hmm. That is what we are going to push at the NAACP, and it will be a year-around project mm -hmm. and program to make sure that we get out and we vote. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor, I think we've said on many occasions uh, on this particular show that in Nashville, I think somebody said at one time that only six or seven percent mm -hmm. of the population actually got out and voted mm -hmm. uh, during uh, any uh, <laughs> Uh, election. Yeah. And so if you can organize people in such a way that you can get 20, 25 percent of the uh, community to participate in the suffrage, you can almost carry every election uh, from that perspective if only such a small number of people actually vote. What do you think about that? That's, that's very true. I mean, you know, our, our, our voice, again, Dr. Haney, is, is in our vote. You know, we got to be able to get out there. If you bring people together and, and if See, politicians, they go where people are voting. You know, they, they service areas. They look at areas where, you know, where, the, where they're getting percentages, large percentage of the votes. They look at a zip code and they're getting a, a small percentage of the vote. Then, you know, they're not going to focus their attention on that particular area right there because they saying, well, the people out there, the people there, they're not concerned about themselves. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if uh, organizations like the NAACP 
uh, will put together a consistent year round uh, voting registration drive, you know, not just waiting until an election come up and then, you know, two months before the election, you're out there registering people to vote, mm -hmm. but make it an ongoing, consistent thing, keeping it uh, always in the forefront of the people. Mm -hmm. Then the people will start beginning to see the value in, in voting, you know, and that's what we have to do. We have to keep it in front of them. Uh, another thing that, in addition to all of that, the NAACP, you know, we have to be uh, visible. Mm -hmm. We have to be vocal. And we have to be valuable. Mm -hmm. And we got to show up that we have value in, in this community. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a granddaughter right here, you know, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's got a future, you know, and, and I'm the one that's got to be looking uh, mm -hmm. forward toward her future mm -hmm. and making sure that there, if she has uh, a, a, a legitimate uh, grief or uh, mm -hmm. gripe concerning something that injustice that takes place in our society mm -hmm. uh, towards her, that she's got an organization that she can go to. Mm -hmm. And that's what the long, uh, NAACP has had a long-standing reputation as an organization that our people could go to mm -hmm. if they were having issues. And, I'm, and, and let me be clear about this. The NAACP is not just an organization just for uh, African Americans or black people, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, for mm -hmm. people of color. Everybody is a color, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Everybody, I don't care what race you are, you're a color. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's for everybody, and everybody can benefit from the, uh, the work of the NAACP. Mm -hmm. But the thing we got to get to right now with this local branch of the NAACP is putting some power in it. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you know, you have people say, well, you got to bark and no bite. Mm -hmm. This branch don't even have a bark. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and, and so in a real sense, uh, just to sort of make people aware of uh, the history of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, I think that you, we've had an opportunity to talk to many members uh, from that uh, organization, and uh, you've uh, been responsible in a real sense for bringing a large number of people to us dealing with the National Association. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Chenault here yes. is here primarily because of uh, your influence and with the organization. And so uh, with Dr. Chenault's leadership and the commitment on the part of others that, and I think as she indicated, that you want to make uh, registration the uh, year-round activity, not to register only uh, two or three months before uh, the time of election. And if you can get that as a as a ingrained idea among people who ought to vote, then I think we'll be all right. Yeah, and you know what? I, I don't want to just 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 lock in steadily just on the vote thing because there's so many other things, issues that's plaguing our society and stuff. I mean, with the police brutality and all kinds of things, discrimination in housing. All these different things, there's so many different committees uh, in the, in, within the branch of NAACP that need to be empowered with people that have a co the concern about what's going on in our, in our community. So I'm saying to people, if you've got a concern about what's going on in our community and you've met and you've met and you've met and you've got all these great ideas and these strategies, but yet you don't have a power source to, to put them into it and to make it happen, then we're encouraging you to come and be a part of NAACP because the membership part of the NAACP P has a power base within itself mm -hmm. because when that executive committee make uh, presents an issue, it has to be uh, ratified. Am I correct? By the yes. membership. Yes. So yes. we need members, people to join and, and, and get behind this thing. And I believe that uh, Dr. Chenault will make uh, the the right leader to lead the 